Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Vocal Defrag. Asking the questions, then questioning the answers. Asking yourself the questions, and then questioning your own answers. This isn't an interview with somebody else. This is all about you. Answering your own questions. We usually do this on a transition walk, usually walking through the forest in South Charlotte. But today... We're at the Sugar Creek Greenway because of the very subject that we're going to be talking about. When things don't go as planned, how do you survive? How do you pick yourself back up? That's what our subject is going to be. Once again, it's asking the questions and then questioning the answers. This is Vocal Defrag. So I had a major event this morning that I have spent the past couple of weeks making sure that everything that I needed to do today was well planned out. I mean, it had to be squeaky clean. It had to be super tight because I'm on a time schedule. I I live a Google Calendar lifestyle. And when it doesn't pan out the way you planned it out, how do you react? How do you recover? Thank God I had my writing instruments with me and my journal because that was my one place where I needed to go to basically just find that net because that meant I was losing money. It also meant that I was losing time I was never going to get back. And when things don't go as planned. Now, my my father would say, put your big boy pants on. Nothing in life goes as planned. But when you live the lifestyle that so many do, when it's so planned out to To the T. What is your recovery? How do you heal your mind, body, and soul knowing that you still have many more hours left in this day? What do you do to recover? One of the things that I wanted to do in the writing and to make very clear, this is how I got control over the emotions. And I invite you to do this. Write on a piece of paper that this was not in your control. The universe is still very much loving, and the universe is going to be giving. Just because this moment changed everything, it doesn't mean that you have to become angry at the people that are involved, because you don't know how your anger is going to be received. I don't want you to come across as an ass to anybody else. What I want you to do is I want you to showcase some real honest-to-God love and support for who it is that you are as a person. Yeah, we spend a lot of time planning so much stuff out. And when it doesn't go right, you tend to explode. My father was very open with his emotions in the way that my sister tended to ruin a lot of his plans. He would have this great idea that we were going to do this as a family. But my sister was a really rough child while we were growing up. To the point to where my father, halfway to this particular place where we were going to go boating, motorcycling, wherever, and he would turn the car around, screaming at every one of the kids in the car, making us all feel horrible, horrible. And then you're not supposed to look at your sister with with anger or anything. Well, that's where you learn. That's where you learn that not all things go as planned, but get your personal emotions under control first. My sabbatim in martial arts, I'm a third degree black belt. He used to ask me all the time, is this a situation that you have control over? And if my answer was no, he says, walk away. Because you're not going to win control. You're going to waste a lot of energy that you're not going to get back. So in doing things on a daily basis, and God... I wish I would have had what I hold today. I wish I would have had it back in my 20s and 30s. I was a spoiled, conceited little radio person that wanted everything to go his way. And I was no different than my father. When things didn't happen my way, well, you know what? I would become vocal. I'm not that way these days. Because here here is the positive out of all of this. Okay, so, so the big event that I planned for, several days of planning, it didn't it didn't play out i would not have gotten to this greenway today if if it had played out i came here cuz i had some extra time to put in before i went to the essential job where i'm going to be until 10 11 o'clock tonight so even though it felt horrible to go through it in the very beginning the greatest thing about this is that i'm in a moment with nature And I'm bringing that moment to you. In my writing, the universe is loving. You did not make this day a failure. 
you are embracing this moment, having that physical conversation with yourself, be it in writing or an out loud conversation. Don't you dare to have a conversation through your head and where you're not moving your lips. <laughs> that, that doesn't work. That's like when we do uh, commercials for radio and television. We have to physically and verbally use those scripts because we got to put ourselves in that moment. The same is true about your emotions. When things don't go your way, how do you recover? How do you heal? How do you forgive? Don't be my dad. Don't do it. Because I'm not turning this car around. What I did is I knew I still had two more interviews to do. I did my interviews with pride. I did it with a smile. And even though I was hurting inside, because I was losing money. I was losing money, man. And, and the thing is, is that I didn't want to fall flat on my face and carry that negative energy all the way through it. So my creative heart and my love for the universe, it painted the photograph of taking a walk on the Greenway. This beautiful Sugar Creek Greenway in Charlotte, North Carolina, where you and I can have a conversation about, hey, hey, not everything is going to go as planned. But that doesn't mean that you have to stick a piece of dynamite on the bottom of your feet and blow your whole entire day totally apart. What you need to do is ask the questions and then question the answers. Ask yourself, how did you feel? How are you going to react? Now, if you reacted this way, how do you think they're going to react? What happens if you don't get these promotions anymore all because you chose to be an ass? Learn to embrace the moment of now by going to forgiveness first. Okay, it happened. It happened. There's nothing you can do about it. Did I have control over it? No. Move on. Move on. Ask the question. Question the answers. I call it vocal defragging. I also keep a defrag journal where, where I write things out. I ask those questions endlessly. And the thing is, is that when you stop asking questions, that's when you start facing your walls. Oh, yeah. And those bridges that are supposed to be there to get you across, they're not there. Because you stopped asking questions and questioning answers. Give it a shot sometime. Be more forgiving when things don't go as planned. I'm Arrow, and that's Vocal Defrag.